For almost a year now, I've been recording TV shows every month, and this is my run and gun rig I wanted to show you, and we'll start right now. So as you can see, this is the DJI RS2 gimbal. I used to have the Zhiyun Weeble S. That was good. I had to make some modifications to accommodate the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. And as you know, it's got this kind of funky form factor. That worked, but as soon as I upgraded to this, I knew it was the right choice. So as I said, uh, we got the Pocket Camera 4K. I'm using these Mica lenses. The reason I use those is because they have hard stops for the iris and the focus. So so that when I calibrate my focus motor on the gimbal, it has hard stops instead of just going forever like the Canon lenses do. They're pretty good quality. So I've got the 12 millimeter here, which I think, I'll put it on the screen here, but I think it's the equivalent of like 24 millimeter. So we'll just get that mounted. These are all parts that came with the pro combo with the gimbal. So you've got your focus motor here, as well as a rod adapter and a plate that goes right into this dovetail. So yeah, so you can see a close up of that. I've got the quarter 20 thread right through this side. So it's on my left side. I just had to do that to accommodate the black magic. So we'll screw that right on here. So this is kind of a Frankenstein setup. This piece is the dovetail piece that comes with the gimbal. And then this arm is actually from a monitor and it's screwed right, or this plate is screwed right into this arm. This is a small rig Sony MPF to 12 volt adapter. So this clips right in here. Any size of these batteries clip right in. I typically use these size because I have a bunch of them. And here's a little tip, just so you know which ones are charged, I put a tiny little rubber band around it just to know that it's charged. So anyways, these pop right into this plate and it'll convert it to 12 volt out. That allows me to mount it right on here. Like I said, it's it's kind of a Frankenstein setup, looks a little goofy. And as you know, if you shoot on the Blackmagic 4K, battery life is terrible. I mean, I'll get 30, 45 minutes out of it max, usually about a half an hour. But with this, I'll be able to shoot for an hour and a half, sometimes two. Of course, if you have a bigger battery, it's gonna be longer. So what we've got here is 12 volt out to the, I believe it's a Limo, two pin Limo, right into the 12 volt power adapter on the camera. Boom. This allows me to do a couple things. Hot swap a battery, because I already have a battery in the camera, and I can pop a new one on, and I'm good to go. One thing to keep in mind, when you do turn it off, I usually remove the battery and unplug the cable. I think the circuitry in here kind of drains the battery and so that's that's one con. All right, so we got power. Now moving on to what's next. We've got some cables here. We can hook up to the follow focus, which we'll do right now. The middle cable goes to the focus motor. And then this top cable here goes right into the camera. On my Zhiyun Weeble S, I was recording onto, I don't have it right, it's in my other case, but the Samsung T5 SSDs. And those are awesome because when you transfer it to the computer, it's a really fast transfer speed and they're reliable. But on this setup, in order to control the start and stop record on the camera, I can use this button right on the gimbal. And in order to do that, I have to obviously hook up to the camera. So this cable goes into the USB port, which is usually occupied by the Samsung T5. So what do I do? Well, I'm recording onto SD cards because CFast cards are incredibly expensive. So I'm just using these Lexar 256 gigabyte 1600X speed cards. I'll put a link in the description, but the important thing is to get ones that are fast. There's a lot of marketing hype with SD cards, but the long, long story short is that the V and then the number on the card indicates your actual write speed. So if it says V30, that's 30 megabytes per second. This is a V60, which is 60 megabytes per second which is ample speed for me to be recording in 12 to one recording compression ratio. Yeah, that was kind of a mouthful. So I can record onto the SD cards in that compression ratio in 30 frames a second and my slow-mo 60 frames a second. No problem, never had an issue. I typically fill the 256 gigabyte card 
in a day. I think only one or two shoots I've had to use the additional 256 gigabyte card. Usually shoots around 250 to 300 gigabytes on the Blackmagic. So there we go. We've got all our cables. Well, except for this. This is, I really haven't used this transmission module much because the producer who's on set, she typically doesn't need to see the image. You know, we're not shooting a TV commercial or typical commercial work where a creative director or whatnot needs to see the image. She's there to say, all right, here's our next location. Let's talk about this. Let's make sure we get the shot of this that type of thing so she doesn't really need to see the image so i don't really use this on those type of shoots but it's there and it helps counterweight some of the camera mass up here so i just leave it on it's not that much more weight all right so another big thing and my role in these shoots is obviously audio there's no audio person there there's no one to help me with that so i am not only the dp and videographer essentially but also the audio person and all that. So the solution I have is a wireless Bluetooth module. I'll put this in the description. Super tiny, super light, and it's got a nice cute little cable that goes right into the headphone jack. And what I do is I just tape it right to the top of the camera. No fancy mounting or whatnot. Gaff tape, if you don't have gaff tape, go get it. It doesn't leave a residue. It's amazing. If you're not using it, what are you doing? So we tape this on here, just like that. Bada bing. It does cover up the tally light, but big whoop. That's fine. So that's there. Now, I love these things. This is the Rode Wireless Go 2. It allows me to record two people at once and it goes right into the camera. So here we've got our receiver. I've got a little piece of Velcro right on the back, a little piece of Velcro right on the top of the camera. Warning though, don't put it here where I have it. Do as I say, not as I do, right? The reason I say that is because both Bluetooth and this use the same RF technology, radio frequency, which means there's interference. And I thought at first I was having issues with this. I thought the Rode Wireless Go 2 had issues, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't. It's because these are so close together that it causes interference. So I've moved it over here, which interferes with my buttons and stuff. Long story short, I need to put this in a different spot and I'll figure that out. But it's just Velcro, another light thing so that the rig doesn't get too heavy. From there, I like to use the included um, cable that came with the Rode Wireless Go 2, plugs right into the microphone port, just like that. Now I use these earbuds, they're wireless Bluetooth earbuds. And I'd say the biggest con is that there's latency. So when I put these on, I can hear things, but it, there's a delay. So when I'm speaking to the talent or to the producer, often I have to pull it out of my ear to be able to speak coherently and hear things properly. This will actually give you a good idea of how the audio is sounding. Obviously these go on each talent. And by the way, when I upgraded these uh, to these from my old system, the, the, the talent was very pleased. They're nice and small. They're not bulky. They don't have these huge antennas and they just clip right on, super nice. These lavalier microphones do not come with the Rode Wireless Go, so they have to pick these up separately, but they're about a bucks a piece. Really nice, really small. They have Kevlar cables, they're super durable. That's what I use, never had a problem. From here, I'll balance it and I'll be able to obviously see what I'm doing, hear what I'm hearing or what the camera's taking in and the RS2 has been awesome. And again, another reason why I got the RS2 is to be able to control the start and stop from the camera, as well as um, focus and having a bigger payload and all that. We'll see you in the next one.